John Whidden with Whidden Gunworks, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about our rimfire ammunition testing. Specifically in this video, what we're going to discuss is the results that you're going to see if you choose to shoot Lapua, SK, RWS, or Norma ammunition and shoot it on our Megalink target system. We're really proud of this Megalink target system, and primarily because we can test this stuff at 50 meters and 100 meters simultaneously. In other words, we shoot one 10 shot group. And we know the size of that group at 50 meters and at 100 meters. So there's a lot of valuable data there. Um, guys who are shooting, you know, extreme long range PRS events and such as that, you know, that 100 meter data is, is really important to them. Uh, and uh, we've also got velocity data at both 50 and 100. All this is just additional information to help a guy choose the best ammunition for his rifle. So I look forward to telling you a little bit about this. We also test in our shop Ely ammunition, and that's tested on Ely hardware and software, and we'll have another different video about how to interpret those results. There's also a lot of good information in the Ely test, and it's presented a little bit differently, so we decided to split the videos into two, but uh, look forward to telling you a little bit about how to read your Megalink results. So shown here is an example page of the results sheet that we would get from a Megalink target, and let's zoom it in and take a real close look at it. First of all, the distance will be noted at the top of the target. And there will be information on group shot at 50 meters and at 100 meters. And that will be the case for each and every lot number of ammunition that you'll shoot. Right here is going to be the lot number of the ammunition that's going to be shot in this group right here. In this case, it's some Lapua long range ammunition. This ammunition shot superbly for this customer. The reason I say that is you can see these group sizes down here, and these group sizes are the size for each and every one of the 10 shot groups that we shot with this ammunition. Now let me pause right here. These group sizes are measured in millimeters, and they are the diameter of a circle that would completely enclose all of the 10 shots in the group. So Pardon my poor artistic abilities, but just to be clear, this circle in this case would go around and just touch each of these bullets right here. And so that's what we're looking at. It's not a center to center measurement as most Americans are used to. So as you can see, these groups right here of you know 12, 13, and, and 15 millimeter range, um, that's, a, that's a very high level of accuracy and a rifle and ammunition combination is shooting extremely well. So that's one point of information we have is the group diameters. The average of the group diameters will be seen over here on the left side. So any ammunition that is shot well for us will shoot four 10 shot groups with. So we've got a total of 40 shots and, uh, and that, that is the average group size for the four 10 shot groups as you can see right there. Now, let me point something else out right here and this is the score and you can see the score indicated right here. Now let's talk about the difference in diameter and score for just a minute. Let's say for example, you've got a rifle and it's shooting a very tight group, packing a lot of shots in the center and it shoots maybe one shot out, you know, at the edge of the group, you know, kind of touching the others. And um, well, heck, to use this example, let's just say it measures 13 millimeters, all right? Outside, you know, all outside in the circle, just as I've drawn. Now let's talk about a different lot of ammunition. And let's say it shoots a group that's shaped a little bit like a donut. Like, you know, all the shots are pretty close, but they're not really right in the center, center of the target. This ammunition might also shoot a 13 millimeter diameter group, but the donut ammunition is going to shoot a lower score. So the score is an indicator of how many shots are packed right very in the center of the target right there. So you can see this first group has a score of 106, the second group 106.9, and so on. Now, how do we get these crazy numbers? All right, in the target that we're looking at right here is the ISSF 50 meter target. This is a target that's shot in the Olympics. And the shooters got really good. And so there had to be a way for some score separation to happen. And so because all those targets are electronic, they went to a digital scoring system. The maximum point value for any shot is 10.9. So if you shoot one right dead in the center of the target, you get 10.9 points. 
If the shot's a little further out, you get 10.8, 10.7, 10.6, and so on. So the maximum possible score for 10 shots is 109. In this case, this rifle shooting some, you know, 106 and 106.9s, those are very high scores and very respectable. And that means that with these groups, as you can see in the picture, it's really packing a lot of shots right in the center of the target. Let's come on down and look at a little bit more of information. As you come down right here, you will see this D max number. This is the diameter if you took all four of those 10 shot groups and laid them on top of each other. In other words, it's the 40 shot group that we just shot. So a diameter of 16.9 is, is very respectable. You can see width and height dimensions. The V mean dimension is the average velocity, and this is clocked, remember, at 50 yards. This is at the target. And you can see a minimum and maximum velocity as well. Now, the other thing I want to point out to you is the score distribution over on the right side of the, of the page here. So you can see that in this case, we had three shots score 10.9, the maximum possible. We had seven shots score 10.8, 10.7s, we had five, and so on as that. Now, what we want is we want this graph to be stacked over hard to the left side so we have a lot of shots of maximum value. So the ideal thing is to have a graph that may have a trend looking something like this, again, because we're looking for this graph to be high on the left side and lower on the right side. Now, that covers everything about our 50 meter group. Let's go down here and we'll talk a little bit about our 100 meter stuff. Now, as you can see at the top of the page, the 100 meters will be marked, so that'll be clear. And we're looking at the same batch of ammunition that we checked out up there on the 50 meter target. Obviously the groups are bigger because the distance is further, but again, you can see the diameter of the individual 10 shot groups here, the scores of the individual 10 shot groups here, and the average diameter of those four groups right here. 26 millimeters is quite respectable at 100 meters. Again, this is an outside to outside measurement, just as we talked about in the 50 meter stuff. The rest of it looks just as, uh, just as you would expect from the prior explanation. In this case, the maximum diameter of all 40 shots was 34.7 millimeters. You can see the picture of the distribution and you can see the score distribution over here on the right side of the page as well.